Hello and welcome to a little special end of season episode of the Liverpool Dream. Just like last season, we are going to take a look at this season, what happened and uh, talk a little bit about the future. And the first thing I'm going to start off is the awards in the Premiership because it's just popped up. And uh, yes, let's just quickly go through them. Hazard is um, footballer, footballer of the year. And he had a great season, obviously. And uh, then we're going to go through. Uh, Diego Costa was uh, Players Player of the Year. Could you imagine that? Uh, Baca was the top uh, goal scorer. And uh, take a look at the goal scoring part. So you can see our Daniel Sturridge is ended in uh, fifth position with 18 league goals. But when it comes to games, I mean... Compared to Baka played 32 games and Daniel Sturridge played 24. For... So uh, he would probably win a bit closer with a few more games. And also Daniel Sturridge, I always, since he's injury prone, I always sub him like when I have the chance. So uh, so I don't think he would have caught Baka, but he could probably reach like 25 goals, I guess. And let's get back here then to the awards. Uh, Oxlade Chamberlain, young player uh, of the season. Goal of the season, uh, James Milner with uh, with the first third place there with Tardik and uh, Schweinsteiger in front of him. And Cortesa won uh, the Golden Globe uh, in front of Joe Hart and uh, Glioris. And Mourinho, obviously manager of the year. Which is some strength since they won the league like without any competition basically. And uh, we had one player that managed to reach the team of the year and that was Klein. And here we have the end of the season awards. And uh, the team and the fans and everybody said it. And Nathaniel Klein with 65% is the player of the season, followed by uh, Milner at 16% and Tillemans at 11%. Goal of the season, James Milner versus Bournemouth. And uh, let's watch it. I mean, it's it's uh, the goal of the season, we need to, to view it. Decent one, for sure, definitely decent one. And signing of the season, Stefan De Vrij from Lazio. We paid a lot of money, but looks like he was worth it. And the young player of the season, Tillemans. And uh, here's the 2016-17 season review. And uh, of course we won the Champions League. You all knew that now. What a fantastic journey it was. Nathaniel Klein, the player with the highest rating of uh, of uh, the competition, and he was also uh, in first position together with uh, a few other guys for uh, uh, most player of the match. And Lucas Leiva, he likes his yellow cards, doesn't he? Um, fourth in the Premiership, and uh, take a look at. Things like this, we can compare it to last season. So last season, when it in fifth position, and we managed to get 65 points. And this season, we managed to reach fourth position, one, po one uh, place better. And also, we took five more points. And of course, the goal for next season will be to, start, like, to keep on improving. Hopefully, we can take at least five more points, maybe more. And, and um, who knows, maybe even compete, compete for, for the top spots. But Chelsea has won the league two seasons in a row. And last season, it was really, really close. It was up to goal difference. But this season, they basically destroyed everything. Nobody else was close. And hopefully, we can change that for the next season. And uh, yeah, basically that. And uh, we have some more competitions. We have the European Super Cup. 
that we managed to win against Man City. Of course, that was the preseason game, not care about it at all. To me, it was just a preseason game, was sort of like doing it like, like the friendlies, rotating players, keeping them fit. So, not much to say there. And FA Cup, sixth round. I don't care much about the FA Cup. The board cares about it, though, so they're not that happy. They want us to reach semi final, but. Uh, Let's see who won. Norwich actually won the FA Cup in the final against uh, Tottenham. And uh, the Capital One Cup, another competition I don't care about. Man United managed to win it against Sheffield Wednesday. And we were out in the third round. I just use it like to play U21 players so they can get some experience. And we used 31 players. It was only one team that managed to use more players than us uh, during this season in in the Premiership. And uh, match of the season, 3 0 against Man United. Moment to forget is that 0 2 loss against Brighton. Oh my god, what a nightmare! So uh, let's talk next season. Um, we have a Champions League title to defend, and of course, that's going to be really, really, really hard. Because, uh, I mean, if you take a look at Past winners here. Can you see many times somebody has managed to defend the Champions League title? Can you? Last time, we, well, I can see if I didn't miss anything. It's when AC, AC Milan managed to do it. 88-89 season and 89-90 season. That's quite a few years ago. Quite a few years ago. So it's definitely going to be a huge challenge to try to defend the title. I mean, if we go move forward, let's see. Nottingham Forest did it in, in the 70s, and we did it in the 70s too, and same with Bayern Munich and Ajax, but I mean, it's going to be a really rough challenge, because in modern times, nobody has managed to win two years in a row, but hopefully, 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 we can show it that it's actually possible. Definitely hope so. But uh, I guess the main goal is going to be, other than winning Champions League, is going to be to improve in the Premiership. Because Liverpool haven't won the Premiership for ages. Last time Liverpool won the Premiership was the 89-90 season. And that's a lot of years ago. Definitely a lot of years ago. So we've been runners up quite a few times here. But now we need we need to win it. But Chelsea is completely dominating right now with three straight up uh, wins. And that's basically the goals for next season. What about the squad? I mean, first off, Mindele will be leaving. Because uh, Rolle is our first keeper and we have good youngsters who, who uh, try to get a place. And uh, for the defense... Mm, I think Skirtle might leave and uh, maybe even Sacco because I mean Sacco for me in, in past versions of Football Manager he has been fantastic like in Football Manager 2015, 2013 and so on he's been like fantastic four stars doing really well but he's not doing that great at all during Football Manager 16 so maybe he might leave if I get a good uh, good offer um, Moreno just signed a new contract so he will be staying and Klein has been uh, basically the best player at least when it comes to stats to the two last seasons so obviously no reason to try to replace him then for the midfielders normally probably I would have had uh, Milner leaving because he's getting old turning 32 but I'm lacking English players and he's a really good really really good tutor with 17 determination and he's a professional so most likely I will actually have him stay just because I'm lacking English players and you need to have English players and we can use him as a tutor too so probably he's going to stay if I would have had a lot of English players, he would probably have left, but, but now he would probably stay. Uh, same with Lu Lucas Leiva, because uh, he's our best defensive midfielder, and he's fantastic future. Andre, 
probably leaving him. I might loan him out for a season and try to get his value up. But he's not probably not going to reach a level where, where I can see him as a as a regular in the team. Ibe might be leaving because, I mean, I would say it's partly my fault. I didn't manage to tutor him in a good way. And, I mean, his potential ability has just been declining. If I managed to tutor him earlier on, get his determination up and make him maybe a professional, maybe his things look different. But right now, he just doesn't reach his potential. Maybe Markovic, because he's wanted by PSG. And right now I have three attacking right wingers. Uh, and like basically using Barbosa, Markovic, Stikovic there. So might sell Markovic because three is a bit too much. Can't really rotate them in, in a good way. But also it depends, of course, what, what offers we get. And something else there? No, I don't think so. One thing I would like is to get uh, another good defensive midfielder. Maybe a box-to-box. -box. Because right now, um, Lucas Leiva is the only like good defensive. I, I need like a second one so he can rotate. I need somebody who can play box-to-box -to -box too. Because right now I only have like three really good central uh, midfielders. And for the strikers... I would say one of Balotelli and Sturridge need to go because I want to bring youngsters in, U21 players, start to rotate and develop them. And probably going to be Balotelli because uh, that's the same with the Milner. I need English players. I need English players to uh, for for uh, for the for the English quota. Uh, so probably that. I mean Sturridge, he is uh, uh, injury prone. So that could be a reason for selling him if I get a good offer. Uh, right now, like, yeah, I'm probably going to prioritize selling Baltelli. But if I get a fantastic offer to good to refuse, then, then I might sell Storage. Klose, definitely staying, just because he's the best striker tutor in the game. Because I have a bunch of talented youngsters. And if you take a look at the youngsters, of course we have, we have quite a few youngsters in, in the senior squad. Uh, they are sorted by age here. You can see the potential. I mean, we had the goal. We, we have a lot of players here that's uh, like U23. But if we take a look at the U21 team and we show the loan out players, um, we can sort them on potential. You can see there's a lot of players here that I'm definitely interested in starting to rotate in, in the first squad your next season. Definitely. So we'll have to see what happens there. And also I have to see if I sign somebody else because none of those guys is really a good central uh, like box-to-box -box or defensive midfielder. So I might have to buy one of those. And also depending on how the loaned out defenders, like how they look when they come back, I need to think who, like if, if I sell Skirtle, who will start playing in, in our A team because I can't obviously rotate all of them. I need to see how Gomez... And uh, Oxford looks when they come back. They haven't developed the way I was hoping, none of them. So I'm not sure. But that's also the same. Like, I didn't have any fantastic defensive tutors, so they haven't gotten the best, like, personalities and so on. Uh, but yeah, definitely need to take a. So do some thinking there, see what will happen with the central defenders if Skirtle leaves. And if uh, also if if Sako happens to leave, then I probably need to buy a central defender too. But as you might know, we have a shitload of money. So much money. And we still haven't gotten an update from the board for, for the next season transfer window. So it could become like even more. Um But yeah, that's basically it. That's the 2016-17 season. And uh Next episode will probably be the end of the transfer window. Not the end of the transfer window, but the end of the preseason for, for next season. So probably some players have left us, some players might have joined us. And, uh, and um, yeah, we'll see how the team looks during the next episode. So I'm looking forward to see you in, during season three. I hope you enjoyed season two as much as I have. And if you haven't already, make sure you press that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, see you in season three. Thank you so much for watching.